Good morning. Um, so just a, a, a quick opening about me. Um, my profession is around sustainability, uh, uh, environment degrees and that sort of thing. I've um, been working with the construction industry for, for 15 years and seen this one coming, innovation. And for meeting this challenge, I believe innovation technology is at the heart of it, how we use data, how we, how we, um, how we manage. And that's now leading me to, to uh, take on training. So I'm, I'm part of the training for the leadership of Skanska around these this uh, particularly sustainability, but, but also looking at, at innovation and, and new, new products and services and things. Very quickly, just, just to put it into context, Skanska is, is a very large company, 50,000 employees worldwide in the, in the blue areas, sorry, 1.4 billion of, gro of, of revenue in the UK, um, fast growth um, happening sort of at, at the moment, but seriously challenging growth. Seriously, you know, un there's, there's some unusual things coming and, and happening un under the scene. Um, worldwide, we, we develop our own buildings, we uh, sell, sell homes, and we, and we invest in infrastructure as well. So we have that kind of long, um, long view on, on the game as well. However, importantly, um, because of how we approach these things, we're still majority a, cons uh, a contractor. We are still that tier one, that, that person who's feeling the pressure at the moment. So some of the, the challenges I present to, to sort of leadership and, and we've heard some of them before but I um, have to bring them to life for people. So this is a picture showing the, the uh, papal election in 2005 and I'm about to show you another picture from 2013 um, and you may have seen it because it sort of went, went, went around and you see that the rapid, rapid expansion of technology <laughs> that has happened and, and is exploding around us. With that is the explosion of data and, the, and the, the potential to use it. And I think a little we're, we're sort of just waking up to the concept, but uh, still slightly sitting on our hands as, as an industry as to what we could be doing. Um, interestingly, data centers globally uh, overtook the UK as an energy consumer in, in the world. So, so you're getting an idea of how much all this liking and, and leaving presentations sitting there on a, uh, on a shared drive somewhere. And, and Moore's law, of course, which is about computing power. This, this, was predicted to slow down, but it just seems to be speeding up. We seem to be finding more and more ways of computing faster and faster and faster. And that, the use of that, the use of that intelligence that will be there is going to be a, a huge disruptor when it finally hits. How it will hit, I don't know, because I think we have, as pointed out before, seriously, serious structural issues when it comes to innovation and it comes to, uh, to wanting to change in, in our industry. Urbanization. Half the, half the globe now living, living in urban areas, uh, and that's going to increase 65%. Um, we've heard a little about the UK market, but actually where the growth is going to be is, is, is globally. So, so globally, the need to build is, is, is intense, the, the, the pressure and, and, the, and the speed that has to happen. Um, and that's, so that's going to be huge growth in, in um, developing areas of the world, which is going to drain on resources drain on skills, drain on traditional skills. But we also have the problem of the existing. The existing urban area has to move as well. It has to change, it has to develop. We have to evolve it, and we have to evolve it smartly. And we have to deal with the new, the new, uh, the new demands of the, of the um, society that, that, that live in it. The environmental challenge, and I love this little, um, this little, uh, this little character which I use in the, in the, in the leadership training because I'm, I'm passionate about this industry that we don't, we don't have that sort of expression and that, and that look on our face. Oops, you know, when, when, as these things are biting, we're seeing and feeling them now, but the, you know, the demand on steel is intense. Um, demand on how steel is used can be intense. It's starting to fluctuate. We're starting to see increasing prices um, spin and, and, and turn, and we know that Human impact is, is a function of population. Population's increasing. It's set to increase. Nothing we can do about birth rate and keeping people alive. It's going up. Affluence, we want that population. We need that population to be rich. We need that population to be stable and secure. That carries an environmental impact with it. And technology as well. And technology is the one that has to change. Technology is the one that has to move. How we use it has to be the way we deal with, with some of these things. Because we know this lot at least 40% of the, of the energy use, 40 to 50% of the carbon emitted around, it is our built environment, it's our urban way of life. That 
I don't think we'll be, we'll be changing, but that's what we've got to make. We've got to improve. And this skill set, this, this need for the industry to evolve, to take more of a, of a proactive approach to dealing with it is, is what, uh, what, what I'm sort of all about. Because this one, this last one, which has been touched on before, it can't be allowed to, to stay. And it, it will, either we won't change or we'll get swallowed up. And we'll get, we'll get swallowed up by something that's happening far east or, or in the developing world with a new approach to meet their demands, to meet their growth demands, have come up with a new way of doing things that, that is going to start shaking us. <coughs> the government knows we've got to change. It's widely known we've got to change. There are wide, you know, these are, these are huge numbers when you look at them. And they're expected, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of looked at to say there is change coming. There's change in the air. 33% lower cost, 50% faster delivery, 50% lower emissions. That's all about the, you know, halving the impact, if you like, the environmental impact. And, and a much better improvement on our exports, a much better improvement on our skill set. We're already pretty good at that in the UK. We've got a great, great export of knowledge and so on. But we need the next round of knowledge and the next round of, um, of approach as well. For Skanska, it's part of, of what we want to do. We, we have a very uh, good focus now on what we call operational excellence, which we're going to run through some of the things that, that we're doing, because I think it brings out perhaps some of the challenges that, that, that we have. So we do have an approach to innovation. It's, it is pitiful. You know, for the size of the organisation, it's not really where it should be, the challenges we're against. But we're under, the industry has a structural problem with it. You know, who should be doing the innovation? Who sees the benefit of the innovation? We've got to get that sorted out. There's going to have to be some kind of shift and rationalisation on that. For Skanska, it's built around trying to improve the culture. We have a, an ideas app on our, on our phones. You can sort of post a challenge or you can post a, uh, a, a suggestion which goes into a central, uh, the central team um, to help them sort of capture these ideas and start turning them into reality. Um, and we, we're, we're built around sort of uh, modelling and automating and, and monitoring using the data. Just some, some examples of where it's starting to happen. We're starting to um, manufacture more and more off-site. So we're starting to uh, industrialise some of the processes. And this is a, um, for, for the Battersea development that's going on in, in, the existing, in the new build stuff. A utility cupboard, which traditionally would have been done on-site. In fact, if I'm really honest, we took it tweaked it a little bit and did as we would have done on site in a warehouse off site. So we're not quite there because there's a whole load of evolution now around that product to make it better, to make it greener, quicker. Um, but these sorts of principles are, are, are coming and this puts us in a very good place con contractually investing in, in this. It was a big investment up front, big investment for the project team to do. And I see project teams seeing innovation. I see the whole industry really is you know, almost spelling in innovation R-I-S-K. You know, why are we incentivized to do it? What is it that, that, that's driving a project team once they're given their program, once they're given their budgets? They've got no room. They've got no room to maneuver, and yet we're asking them to take the brave step. So again, there's a problem, you know, almost in the, in the psychology of how, how, we, how we approach. Um, and it, it, it proved a great result for us. So it's, you know, it, but there are big, big changes still to make, and you get more, once you start thinking industrially, you start thinking of, how these things fit together, what are the joins, where can we take them apart again to transport them, because they did go like that on the lorries. So we were transporting quite a lot of air, so there's, there's still innovation to make, but it was all pre-commissioned, it was all noise tested, it was all as much as it could be connected and ready to go, it was. So we were on the site bit, we were, we were plugging and playing. We're also looking at robotics, but robotics is an interesting one for me, because I, I, I actually feel the robotics bit is a slight red herring. I think you'll be perhaps, 2050 or something, you'll be working with a robot, you know, you have a robot as your work companion that will be doing a lot of the, the things that humans aren't, uh, aren't great at doing or, or the repetitive processes, particularly in, in some cases. But I think the real thing in, in this is the artificial intelligence that can go behind the use of data and the flow of how we manage a, a, a project. <coughs> Industrialization, I think I touched on. Um, the other uh, uh, big area we're looking at is, is, in the, is in the monitoring, conditional monitoring. Heard it, heard it talked about before. The themes, I think, are consistent around um, what a lot of the large companies are looking at. But it is about 
being able to hand over not just the building and not just say, there you go. It's about giving it a, a way of, of being optimised and managed to its absolute benefit of knowing when things need to be replaced, um, of being able to look at them remotely rather than being there. Um, so that, that, that sort of use of data is, is absolutely key. We drive also a green. Green is a, an important value for, for Skanska and we've set out what we want to be building, which is some super hard uh, environmental targets there, are super energy efficient and, and uh, zero primary energy. So it's m as much renewable as it has um, uh, tr traditional energy. Z or near zero carbon in its construction. No hazardous materials, uh, no unsustainable materials. It can be taken apart again as well as it can be put together. We're not building this all the time, by the way. We're, we've built it like once or, or, or twice across the world. And this is where we're looking, but Skanska's asking us now to, to measure against these sorts of targets and say, look, how far is your industry in, in where you're working? What are the barriers to it? How are we going to, uh, how are we going to get, get around it? Because it, it drives innovation. You know, we're dealing with existing buildings. That great big picture I showed with the 40%, most of that is existing. It's already in place. Got to find a way of incentivizing the improvement there, which takes new technology better use of, uh, of data, but also being able to input data into old infrastructure, being able to collect the right things out of it. Huge, huge and interesting. And, uh, and it's, um, it, is, it is driving an approach where we're trying to link green and innovation together. So we're trying to show that a lot of meeting the global challenges is going to come through the innovation. It's going to come through off-site manufacturer, which saves time and money and effort. It also saves waste. You're, you're a lot more materially efficient You've got a lot more choice of the materials that you can use um, once you get into the design process. So you can, you can um, uh, reduce the impacts there. And there are some other, the, 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 uh, another big area of, of interest, particularly around data. When you think of um, places like, and it's interesting, I haven't seen it yet, but apparently the, the new, uh, new smartphones and things, not, not far away, a couple of generations away, with air quality monitors. People were already aware of air pollution issues. Places like Oxford Street, you know, bust their air, their air quality targets within like nine or ten days of, of the year. So you, you have it on your phone flashing at you saying, this is air is killing me. You know, wh why would you go there? So, so why would you, or as a parent, why would you take your kids there? You know, so, so that, that sort of pressure, that availability of data to the, to the people we're serving might cause us to change much quicker than we're comfortable or, or, or able to. But that health, well-being, productivity of like the built environment, um, a real key theme we see developing now, um, and closing that performance gap, making sure people get what they want. And a key skill gap in the, in the FM world is, as we're using more technologies, we're making these buildings or assets smarter, they need to be managed that way as well. Um, and they need to be, in general, uh, a couple of the buildings that, that, that we have that, that are you know, we're missing this at the moment, are ones that are super complicated in their design. Lots of new technology, lots of new, new ways of working. Um, and the, the FM bit hasn't come to the party yet. So, that, so joining that up and, and turning those lessons around, using that data better, um, is, is, a, is, a great, is a great thing. So a C for, for us and for the industry, the rapid move of technology is, a, is a, just a huge challenge. Data is just going to be flowing everywhere and flowing out of us, even whether we like it or not, it's going to be flowing around. We had infrastructure investors. I, I, um, a, a friend of mine works with a company that helps advise funds on, on how projects are, are doing it. And they're not doing it by talking to the companies involved. You know, they're scanning them by satellite or by drone or whatever, you know, just showing where they should be and where they are. Um, so that crude example, but an example of the data around us and then our approach to engineering and how we can do it digitally, how we can do it enabled, computer-enabled design, having all the information in the model already, it's perfect to hand over to the, to the management and optimization of that as it goes. And that is a different skill set. Um, and I think there's, there's a thing with new, new solutions evolving and coming forward all the time at a tremendous rate. You know, if, if when, a, when you take have new solutions into a contractor that say, we're not necessarily, as I said before, incentivized to, to change under the existing process. You know, the existing way things are bought, we're, we're very much constrained on a, on a time and a, and a budget. 
Um, and, and that makes it difficult to get new things in place. It makes it difficult to adopt new methods. Um, and it, it's one where it's terribly frustrating for someone like me, but small victories and all of that keep me going. Um, but it, it is the one where we're going to have to get better at working on these and, and, and hopefully inspiring the next generation that there's a huge world here to be, to be changed and affected by the construction. And that's what keeps me working in this industry, I know, and I'm sure that's what will, keep, will, will inspire others in. Um, and on hearing some of the, the, the conversation, it struck me, you know, we, we are actually caught with the word construction. And maybe that's almost part of our problem in, uh, in talking, because I, I know I work in construction, but I don't always think of it as what I think it conjures up in most people's minds. Thank you.